I lived in Texas for almost 30 years and it took me until I got to California to try a Texas whiskey. But I got one and we're trying it today. Let's do this. Welcome to Whiskey Riffs, I'm Kevin, and today we're going to do a Texas whiskey from Balcones, Texas, single malt, single barrel whiskey. Whiskey without an E, which is kind of cool. Uh, most American whiskeys have an E in them, and uh, Balcones says, no, nope, we're going the, the Scotch, uh, Scotch way of spelling it. So I like that, nice little change. It is bottled at 53% alcohol by volume. And this is a single cask whiskey, which means that it's not a blend of a run of barrels of whiskey. It comes from a single individual cask. This one is French oak. They've aged these for at least two years. And this specific bottle, since it came out of one cask, has very uh, specific dates on it. It was distilled on January 12th, 2017 and bottled uh, June 18th, 2019. So a little over two years for this one. And it's never chill filtered or colored right on the barrel, right on the, right on the barrel. This is not a barrel, this is a bottle. Right on the bottle, it says never chill filtered or colored. And I really love that. Thank you, Belconis, for putting your information on the bottle. It's so much easier than having to search and dig on websites or on review sites to find out how a whiskey is distilled and how it's uh, prepared. But that is all natural color. And the French oak, I would imagine, is doing a lot to influence that color. Of course, so is the Texas heat. Two years in a cask in Texas is gonna give you some dark whiskey. It's just what happens with the heat. If you have a scotch that's 25 years old, it may not come close to this color. But then again, the cold climate doesn't move the whiskey in and out of the grain of the wood as well. So you don't end up with as much of the coloration from the wood. Distillery is located in Waco, Texas, which is between Dallas and Austin. Texas is a massive state, um, but Waco is a very small city when you compare it to places like Dallas, Austin, Houston. Uh, they punch well above their weight class with this whiskey, though, and the distillery is just a marvelous place of experimentation and uh, new development. They only started in 2009, but they came out with the idea that we're going to make just the best, uh, most, uh, most interesting flavors of whiskey that we can possibly come up with. And they have such a, a, an amazing selection on their website. In addition to this single malt, they, have, uh, they make rums, and I'm not even gonna try to remember all the things that they make. So listen to some of the expressions. Uh, a Mirador single malt, a blue corn bourbon, a pot still bourbon, 100 proof rye, peated single malt, a weeded bourbon, and so many more. They have annual releases, they have standard releases, and I was just scrolling through the website going, I don't have enough money right now to buy all the different expressions I'd like to try from Balcones. I'm just terribly impressed. And uh, mal uh, malt's like a, um, a blue corn malt. Blue corn is definitely a more expensive grain to get for doing your distillation. So they're not 
they're not taking the cheap route for any of this stuff. Balconis just does a really great job of taking the inspiration and running with it. A lot of distilleries will uh, brag about the awards they've won, and they've won a handful of awards, where Balconis, a Texas distillery, has over 50 awards today. And I would imagine that every new year they're going to find some other way to win an award because there's just so much innovation going on there. I'm really impressed with them and I've really enjoyed getting into this uh, expression that they have. Um, and I'm really curious about what some of the other ones taste like. I'll put a link in the description and in the comments to their website so you can check out all the different expressions that they have. Uh, but I only have one right now and I want to get to the tasting. So let's do that and see what we have with the single malt, single barrel. I got this note before when I was tasting it and, and I, I don't know where it comes from. So I don't know if you've ever had uh, toasted raisin bread, but the type I used to have as a, as a kid, it was raisin bread, had a little uh, swirl of cinnamon in it and, um, and we used to toast it and put butter on it. And the first thing I got on the nose when I, when I smelled this whiskey was that toasted raisin bread. I don't know why a little bit of cinnamon hit me off the bat. I'm also getting some, um, some bananas and peach. Pretty bright, uh, flavors on the nose. And I'm not getting so much of the raisin smell, but it, it reminded me of that raisin toast. So maybe it's the toast more than the raisins because the fruits definitely are brighter than, than raisins. Now it's at 53% alcohol by volume, 106 proof. So it's going to give you a little bit of burn when it first goes in. Right away on the taste, I get a lot of rich, uh, deep flavors. It's darker than the nose. A lot of oak notes. The French oak seems to be coming through. Spices. I'd say you were, you were baking cookies that were uh, maybe cinnamon cookies. But the, the finish is long, uh, very warm. Seems to be very complex in the flavors. I'm having trouble picking out the, the lighter fruits that I got on the nose. The taste is maybe more barrel notes that I'm getting that are darker. I love how rich it is though. It feels luxurious tasting it. It's certainly not shallow at all. Let me put some water in it and see if we can drag out some more flavors. I'm certainly uh, confident that we can play around with this one. 53% gives us a lot of room. So I'll put a good amount of water in to start and we'll go from there. Didn't change the nose much. Maybe a little lighter on the nose. Ooh, that, um, that brought back some of the, the lighter fruits. Definitely getting more of the, uh, the pear. And then the, um, the spices ramp up too. Uh, it's, it's weird because the spices are on the outer parts of my tongue and uh, the fruits are in the middle. I think it can go uh, a bit more with the water. See what else we can pull out of this lovely Texas whiskey. Wow, it really opens up when you add water to it. A lot of room to play. You can spend some time dialing this up or down depending on how much water you want in there. I bet this is a whiskey that it can even take some ice, although I'm not a big rocks fan as far as, uh, as far as whiskeys go, but this has a lot of meatiness to it. It's not gonna wimp out on you. Getting more of the fruit flavors on the nose, even like an apricot. I think I got banana right off the bat. I don't get much of that anymore. Maybe it's down there still. The more water I added, 
the more the, the spice is ramped up. So if you're not looking for that spicy edge, you may have to be careful about adding um, too much water to it. I think the finish, I'm getting more caramel with the spices. Spices on the taste and on the, on the finish, less spice and more of the caramel. The caramel lingers. As far as price goes, um, this bottle was one I got from, where did I get it from? Oh, this bottle is one I got from the Craft Whiskey Club, so I didn't get a price on this one. I looked online and I saw some prices from $70 to $90. But a lot of those were for the, the Texas Single Malt Classic Edition. So the single barrel is different, maybe hard to find. It was still on their website, but um, some of the places that I was looking at purchasing it weren't clear whether they were selling the single barrel or the classic and um, check for that. Make sure you know what you're getting. They're both 53% alcohol by volume, so they should be similar in taste. The difference will be that when you take a single barrel and you bottle that, you get a very distinct taste compared to the next cask that you bottle and the next cask that you bottle. They're all going to be slightly different. Even if they're from the same run, casks make a difference. The wood is unique, so you're going to get a little bit of difference. Even where those casks are in a rickhouse or a warehouse, it makes a difference in the flavors. Now, if you have the classic edition, it's going to be based on a run of whiskey, which will be multiple casks that they blend together to get a more consistent flavor profile. So if you're looking for something that's unique, look for the single barrel. If you're looking for something that you can replicate and is more consistent, then you want to do something that's more of a, a run of whiskey like the Classic Edition. And also take a look at some of their other whiskeys that are online. There may be some flavor profiles there that just stand out to you. I know that there's that their uh, blue corn bourbon was one that I really wanted to try. And I got at least one source that I can get that from, but they have dozens of additions uh, and expressions of whiskeys that I have no idea where I'm going to get them yet. I'm, I'm going to definitely look. I've, I've set aside a little bit of my whiskey budget now that I've gotten into the balconies and have tried it more. Uh, I do want to experience some more of their award-winning whiskeys. Um, it, it's, it's distilleries like Balconis that get me excited about the future of whiskey. You can imagine that it's great to have a, a Macallan that's been around for so many decades that you know what you're gonna get out of them. But it's also great to see that some people don't like a standard Scotch whiskey. Maybe they don't like a peated whiskey. Maybe they're not a fan of standard bourbons. But if you have a, a, a corn whiskey or a weeded whiskey, they have one on their website um, that is that is not even defined as a whiskey, but it's created similar to a whiskey. So it's a great concept that Balcones has of experimentation, of pushing the limits, of seeing you know, what's out there as far as flavor profiles, because people are different. And the more expressions of whiskey and spirits that they can create, the more chance they are of finding that profile that fits each individual person and kind of rings that bell for them. So good job, Belconis. Uh, I'm very impressed with what you're doing and where you're going. And uh, good on Texas for coming up with some very unique whiskeys. Impressive. Well, I've definitely become more of a convert to uh, what could be possible with new distilleries like Balconis and the ability to um, experiment and create with Texas whiskey. I have to figure out 
which of the expressions I'm going to buy first. Um, if you've tried any of the Belconis whiskeys, let me know. Put a note in the comments and tell me what you've got and why you enjoyed it. And I'll see if that's, uh, that boosts it up on my list of next purchases from this distillery. Take care of yourself. Um, be safe. Reach out to family and friends. You know, this is a tough time for a lot of people. So take care of each other. And um, till next episode, cheers. Mm -hmm.